Joining me now is the host of the Undivided podcast, Brandy Cruz. Brandy, you recently held up a pop-up event protesting Senate Bill 5599. This is a bill which hides runaway children who want to undergo so-called gender-affirming care from parents who are deemed unsupportive. Transgender activists were there to derail the event and intimidate those attending. Why are you guys chasing me? It's against the law. Did you know this? Did you know this? Ma'am, ma'am, you, you know you're physically touching me? You're welcome to protest. Brandy, welcome to the program. Tell me why you think this bill should go to voters. Yeah, and that's what this would do. At the end of the day, it's about giving voters a choice. I don't see what's so controversial about letting voters decide on whether a bill stands. Um, I First of all, it's important to understand that Senate Bill 5599 doesn't exist on an island. There have been a lot of steps leading up to this bill that have been eroding the rights of Washington parents and the rights of parents in our state to have a say in what their kids are doing uh, medically and at the bottom, uh, at the base level with this bill, have a right to know where their kids are sleeping at night, which I think is a very important thing that's very reasonable for parents to want to know. But Senate Bill 5599, as you explained, what it would do is say, hey, if you're a kid in Washington state of any age and you want to seek protected health care that's already protected under the law, uh, so let's say that's gender hormone therapy or various types of reproductive care, and you have a disagreement with your parents about it, the state is going to make it easier for you to run away from home to get that care. They're going to say that if you show up at a shelter and you say, I'm here because I want to seek protected health care, then under Senate Bill 5599, which is already law in Washington state as of this past legislative session, then the state of Washington, the shelter, the Department of Children and Family Services, they are not going to tell your parents where you are. They're not going to give your parents your physical address at the shelter. And why it's concerning to me is the slippery slope is clear. Prior to Senate Bill 5599 going into effect in Washington, there was only one reason, Rita, one reason where a child could go to a shelter and the state wouldn't tell the parent where that child is. And that was physical abuse in the home. That was the only reason, the mm -hmm. only justification for what I, I consider government-sanctioned kidnapping of your kids. And I think most reasonable people don't find that controversial, right? Yeah, if there's uh, evidence of abuse in the home, then we need to investigate that before we let the alleged abuser know where their kid is. Now, under 5599, there are two reasons, physical abuse and if a parent has disagreements about what kind of health care their child is getting. And I don't think that is right. Well, no, it's not right. It's outrageous. But do you think voters in your state would back parental rights if they had the vote here? Or is the state too left-leaning and too captured by this sort of uh, politics? Well, it depends how honest the campaign is. So first of all, I'll note that it's an uphill battle to gather 200,000 signatures. And I've been holding these events across the state of mm. Washington, uh, which are designed as meet and greets, but also an opportunity for people to sign Referendum 101, which would send... 5599 to voters in November if we get enough signatures by July 22nd, I believe is the deadline. So if that happens, of course, you're right. The natural question is, OK, well, this is a bill that Democrats passed. It was passed along party lines, signed into law by a Democratic governor. Will voters decide to repeal it? I believe if both sides are honest about what the bill actually does, then yes, but that is a tall task. And we already know what the um, mm. uh, left has painted us as. They say that if you uh, are opposed to 5599, you're transphobe. You hate trans kids. You don't mind if trans kids have a higher rate of suicide and you want them to wind up homeless on the street. And, and that is the fear mongering that was in place when 5599 was being debated in the first place. And what I'm trying to do with these with these events, what I'm trying to do with my show on this topic is to tell reasonable Washington parents, no, you're not a transphobe if you want to know where your kid is sleeping at night. You're not a horrible, terrible person as a parent if you think it's a little weird that the state of Washington wants to make it easier for your kid to run away from home. And so, you know, I'll use every fiber of my being to try to push back against the fear 
fear-mongering that the left and Democrats who supported this bill are sure to employ if the referendum makes it on the ballot. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to end up being a very dishonest campaign. And a lot of people are scared away by the fear-mongering. No one wants to be labeled a transphobe. No reasonable, rational parent who's just trying to raise a family and work well, for a living no, wants to but clump at that narrative. Randy... They, they do, but, I mean, that word has lost all meaning. Uh, you look at what's happening in the UK, you look at what's happening in Scandinavia when it comes to the medical profession's attitude to what to do with kids who are gender-confused and uh, to suggest that any child who says, I want to transition, should be given hormones or other treatments that may have all sorts of consequences, some of them irreversible, is mad. But... It, where you are, the parents seem to have absolutely no rights whatsoever. Good luck to you with this fight. But you've also been advocating other areas. You recently covered the historic gas price hikes in Washington. Are politicians, they're putting policies in place that are designed to increase gas prices? Well, yes. I mean, so this has been the most ridiculous debate, but it just shows that I think we're in such a blue state that politicians can pass a policy yeah. explicitly designed to raise the price of gas. That's what they want to do, right? They want people to use alternatives. So they're trying to make the gasoline more expensive. That's what it's explicitly designed to do. And so they passed a cap and trade program, a carbon tax um, in 2021. And as it was you know, all leading up to it going into effect, the Democrats, the governor, the Department of Ecology in this day denied, denied, denied that this would increase the, the price at the pump for Washington families. They denied it up until the second that the price at the pump started to increase as soon as the carbon tax went into effect and there's still gaslighting over it, which is absurd considering, again, you know, I would feel differently about this, Rita, if Governor Jay Inslee, who you might recall of our state, he, um, well, you might not recall because he ran for president in 2020, but pulled it like 0% and had to uh, drop out pretty quickly, but he ran <laughs> as the climate governor. And, you know, if he had just owned this and said, hey, we're going to pass a carbon tax, yeah, it's going to increase the price of the pump, but I believe this is the right thing to do for the environment or whatever he believes, I would actually have more respect for him if he had owned it. But he's mm. saying that they need this policy because it's going to uh, improve the climate for future generations, and then he refuses to own the consequences of it. Uh, Washingtonians are already heavily taxed. And when you're talking about 45, a 45, 46 cent increase per gallon for Washington families, not only does that hit them at the pump it hits them at the grocery store anything that goes on a truck uh is going to be is going to cost more for them and so for him not to own it and not to acknowledge what this is doing to working class people in our state is not only absurd but it's actually offensive and kind of sick when you talk about had he given a warning to washington families to say hey you know, starting mm. in 2023, when this goes into effect, yeah, it's going to cost more. So maybe they could plan, maybe they could budget, maybe they could decide, you know, uh, should I carpool? What can I do to save money in other areas? He let it blindside them uh, by denying, denying, denying that it would do this when everyone with a lick of common sense knew that it would. Well, Brenda Cruz, you keep on fighting the good fight, but do you ever feel like just, I don't know, throwing in the towel and moving to... Florida or Texas and getting away from the blue state madness that you you live in. No, no, because it's beautiful here. And I uh, I remember the beautiful state I moved to 13 years ago. I We have a, a good Republican candidate for governor, Dave Reichert, who I think has as good a chance of, as any Republican has ever had in our state to win in 2024. And I also believe that once you m wake up the reasonable middle in our state uh, and they see what's happening with these transgender issues and Senate Bill 5599 and who's to blame for high gas prices, I think you can make a difference. We just need a little bit of balance. We just need a little bit of a reset. Oh, you are a uh, better woman than I. I don't know if I could cope with that, uh, but uh, keep fighting the good fight and we'll uh, check in with you down the track. Will do.